Dixie Belle paint fans, how are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live where I am here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to hang out and play with paint. And today I have a new project. You can see two projects actually. Um, I love to work on a jewelry box. Jewelry boxes are one of my favorite things to paint and make over. They're small, you can usually finish them in a couple days, they don't take up a lot of space. If your back hurts, you can sit on a floor or on a chair rather than the floor where you usually catch me, right? So I love a good jewelry box makeover and I've been lucky lately to get some really, really kind of oversized armoire style jewelry boxes versus um, the really teeny tiny ones, which no joke, I'm sitting on a chair and underneath my desk, I probably have about five tiny jewelry boxes ready to go <laughs> for a makeover. So I have a beautiful jewelry box and I thought we could um, add some gorgeous transfer to it today. And I have something that I've never used before. This is the brand new Gilded Age transfer from Dixie Belle Bells and Whistles. And it is so, so pretty. And I haven't even opened it yet. I thought I'll save it for you guys. We can open it together. I can show you exactly what's inside a Dixie Belle Bells and Whistles transfer, and we can decide how we're going to apply it to this piece. All right, sound like a plan? Great. As always, I do a lot of talking. Sometimes I don't see your comments. I am gonna pull the camera in nice and close so that you can see exactly what I'm working on um, and where I'm working on it on this piece so you can get a good view. But if I miss your comment as it rolls by, don't worry, I'm always happy to come in after our, my video is finished and answer any questions or comments we might have. And if you need a longer tutorial or another kind of back to basics video tutorial on what a transfer is or how to use a transfer, you can always find that on my YouTube channel. And I am at the top drawer RBA on YouTube same name across the whole board. You can find me everywhere and I have videos for everything. <laughs> I'm constantly creating and making videos for you, for you, so that you can learn how easy this is and we can do it together. So what is this? This is the Gilded Age Transfer. You can see it right there, the name of the transfer. These transfers are packaged a little bit differently. If you remember, I probably have one over here somewhere close by. If you remember, transfers used to come in a tube, right? A round paper tube and then be rolled up inside and you would then get them and take them out in the same matter that I'm gonna take this one out in. But for storage purposes, this works a lot better because it's nice and flat. And for shipping purposes, this is the best because you can sh save your pennies on shipping um, and not have to ship a big tube. So actually, handy dandy tip of the day, there's a little hole up here. I did purchase a Dixie Bell hanger that has like little metal clips all along a big line that I can use to hang up every single transfer all along the wall. They're actually behind me over there in my corner and I keep them right front and center so I can see exactly what I need to use for any inspiration. So what's inside here? Should we open it? That's a lot of talking. Um, this transfer has four sheets inside, okay? So inside every transfer, there are some things that are the same and there are some things that are different. Sometimes transfers have more than four sheets. Um, and if that happens, that's just because it's a bigger layout or bigger design, but this transfer itself has four sheets of transfer. I'm gonna try and not drop everything on the floor. So on this little card right here, you're gonna find the name and you're gonna find the size and how many sheets are in here, all right? This sits in the bottom of your transfer bag and holds the transfer um, in there, as well as the exact images here that shows you exactly what is inside your transfer piece because you can really only see one side, right? Because it's laying flat. And it also gives you some helpful tips. These are rub-on transfers. They release easily when burnished. You can layer them, cut them, design them. Um, and we're gonna do that today. So I keep this because when I put it back in the bag, I keep it all together so that I know exactly what I am doing and where. Another thing you're gonna find inside of every single transfer package is a instruction sheet, okay? This is gonna be a quick little blurb um, that you can read and learn how to use a transfer. And there's some helpful tips as well. Helpful tips such as making sure your paint is nice and dry. I painted this yesterday with chalk mineral paint. It is dry. Transfers like to go onto a dry surface, all right? It talks about 
what you can do to maybe layer your transfers or design your transfers, how to release them from the paper, but I'm gonna show you all of that stuff. All right, so you have an instruction sheet. You also have, somewhere inside this little pile, a burnishing stick. Every transfer comes with a small tool. This is your paper and, and wood. I guess this one's wood, they used to be something else. They look like bamboo. I actually save these, I use these for everything. I use them for stir sticks, I use them for, oh my gosh, everything. I think I've used these more than anything else, so I keep them keep them because they're handy dandy little tools. But this little burnishing tool is what you use to burnish the transfer off of the paper and onto your piece, all right? This is a helpful handy tool. And you have four sheets inside. Let's show you every single sheet that's inside your paper. This is sheet number one. Beautiful, detailed, floral and scrolls. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's sheet number one. I'm gonna put it on my lap, hopefully it won't fall. This is sheet number two two huge scroll works, which if you were working on a very long drawer, say your drawer was like long this way, horizontal, you could line these up and you're going to be able to make one continuous pattern with this sheet, all right? You also have this sheet, which has really large flourishes and some beautiful green pieces on the side. See that border? It almost looks like a box. You could probably create a beautiful box around your piece that you're working on. I see gorgeous detail. I mean, can you see the detail that's on this? Can I hold it still enough with my shaky coffee hands for you to see how gorgeous this is? This transfer is so, so pretty and I'm very excited to use it today. And this is my favorite sheet. So this has jewels. Look at those jewels. It's gold, it's flourishes, it's jewels. I mean, it is totally the Gilded Age. And this is what made me pick this transfer for this piece. There are tiny jewels that you can cut out and actually stick on. This hardware, you know jewelry boxes, you can't really take this hardware off unless you remove the inside lining. And I didn't want to do that. So I very gingerly painted around the actual hardware, but I did remove it on the sides here and put it up in the top. So we're gonna put all of this transfer on my piece, all right? And we're gonna play with it. We're gonna bring it in nice and close and you guys are gonna hang out with me and play with paint and transfers today. So what color is this? Anybody wanna guess what color? I painted this cutie little armoire, this little jewel armoire. Any guesses, any guesses? There's no prizes for the winning answer. I just wanna know if you know what it is because it is one of my favorites. I've used it more than two or three times now. This is from the new cottage collection if that helps you. I'm gonna wait and see if anybody can guess the color because it's, it's actually a really beautiful shade of green. Weeping Willow, boom, Patty's got it. Patty is my star student of the day. You, you win the prize, Patty, <laughs> it is Weeping Willow. I love this color. And the reason I picked this color is because if you look at your transfer, you're able to find colors within the transfer design that you're able to choose your paint from. All right, now here's a handy tip for you, okay? Say you had this transfer, you know you wanna use this transfer, but you're really unsure of what color to choose for your piece. You could very easily take a picture of a section or the whole page and then go to the color lab on the Dixie Bell Paint page. If you go to www.dixiebellpaint.com, there's a color mixer, a color lab right at the top of the page. You could enter in that photo and it's going to pull every single color out of this piece that you could then choose to create your project. It could give you a custom color. It could give you a Dixie Belle color that's already formulated. It can give you shades and different shades of color if you wanted to do multiple on a piece. But I mean, look at that beautiful red, that gorgeous violet. I chose the green because of the green flourishes and I wanted this transfer to stand out against this color. So this is Weeping Willow, you're right, you win the prize. So what are you gonna need for a transfer? Like, what do you need? Is there tools that you need, like other than what I showed you in the package in this little burnishing stick? Well, it's always helpful to have a pair of scissors, right? Because you're going to wanna cut out your images from your transfer design because you're not peeling off this, this transfer backing and sticking the whole thing on, especially on a piece like this that has such intricate little details. So a set of scissors is always handy. And if you know me, if, you, if you're a mom, I mean, if you know how this rolls when it comes to scissors, these always go MIA, they go, but they, I, I found a pack of like five at Costco and I bought them and brought them home. I hide one in here so like I can always find it and then the rest of them just float around. Children love to steal my scissors. So grab a couple pairs of scissors and then you might also want a X-Acto knife. This knife is actually well loved. I probably need a new one. I was looking at it today and I thought, oh Melissa, you should have got a new 
a new knife. This is just a fancy pants one from the dollar store. Because it's sharp blade, if you put a transfer over the edge, you can easily cut it with this blade in order to free the transfer up if your drawer's opening or your door's opening. Um, so this is always a helpful tool to have. And you can get this at the dollar store for $1.25. They should call it the $1.25 store now, not the dollar store. Makes no sense. So let's do it, shall we? All right, so what is the plan? Well, we are going to layer and make this piece absolutely beautiful with this transfer and like i said i've never used it before so i'm kind of pumped i'm kind of excited there are glass pieces that go onto the uh the sides of the jewelry box i've taken them off they have almost like a, a cut on them i have to clean them and then reinstall them but isn't that pretty this is a really pretty box so my thought was leave the glass as is sometimes i cover if there's like a weird flower pattern on here that i don't like but i, I like this and then this is like a 3d cut out of the um of the actual glass so i think what i'm going to do is focus on the interior so you can see this big section right here and sometimes you can use tape which hello tape is another handy dandy tool to have um, if you're working with transfers, you can tape them up, but I'm going to use smaller bits, so I'm not going to need to tape up my layout. Sometimes I cut out my transfer and tape it up just to kind of see where things are going to sit, especially if it's a big piece with like a large flat front. So for this piece, let's look at what will fit inside of this little section. I don't want to use the corner because there's actually a bar that goes up here. Let's see if I can find it. Where are you? I don't want to stand up. This bar goes here. When then you could hang your jewels on the side. So I don't really want to use the corner piece. So that's not going to work for there. I was thinking, yikes, I was thinking this. I could probably cut this part of the transfer and put that piece right here. So when the door is closed, right? Let's see if I can close it with it sitting here. When the door is closed, you could look in and peek through the glass and see that because there is larger flowers, but I wanna save one flower for the top. And that's where the, the top is gonna to sit with that flower over here. So I think I'm gonna put that on the side. What are your thoughts on that process? And then I'm gonna save the jewels for the front and work around the, the kind of the edges and the borders. Like maybe put that around the border up at the top. What do you think about putting that inside the glass part right there? Do you think that's a good idea? Let's lay this transfer down so I don't lose these pieces and cut out some parts. So transfers always have a border line, right? You're, you have two sheets. This is your clear transfer image sheet with the sticky back. This part is fragile. I do not suggest removing it until you're ready to actually apply your transfer. And then you have your backing sheet, which is the white sheet. That's what keeps your transfer kind of fresh and clean and ready for use. So let's cut and divide these two pieces. I'm going to gently go around this little scalloped edge. Whew. There we go. How'd you guys like the pumpkin painting from last week? I did see Patty and she's on here. If you get a chance, go see uh, Patty's page. Um, reimagined by Patty. She has her pumpkins up there. She painted the pumpkins that we did last week and they're so super cute. Super, super cute. So Patty, if you're on here, tell everybody to come over and check out your page because they will um, love your pumpkins. They're adorable. I took my pumpkins to the Lazy Daisy here in Richmond, Virginia, where I sell my items. Hopefully they will be gone soon because y'all, Christmas stuff is coming in in like two weeks. What the heck? I'm not ready to like skip through the seasons. I'd like to enjoy it while I have it. And I don't even feel like it's like really any kind of fall yet. It only just started getting cold last week, which led me to paint pumpkins. So I don't know, is it cold where you are? Let me know, let me know in the comments below. So this is the piece that I'm thinking. Now you can use a ruler, and I usually have one over here in my, um, in my little stash, or you can grab a pencil and you can mark exactly how far this goes down. I do like this here. I think this will be a nice embellishment for when the door is closed so you can see some kind of fancy pants through there. And what I'm gonna do is show you a trick. So I've cut the edge right? So there's, so there's a, a negative space here from when they print the transfer. I've cut to the edge so that when I lay it down, I can get as close as I can to the top of this piece. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to line it back up. You could use your fingers to just create a fold. Now this might be a little bit more difficult. Maybe what I should do is take it off the wheels. Let's take it off the wheels. 
have it on a little furniture mover so that I can move it around easily when I was painting. But if I push too hard, that means my little cabinet's gonna roll away. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it to roll away. So I'm gonna turn my paper backwards. I'm going to place it down. And I just wanna get as close to this line as possible. So you could take your finger and you could score your paper, which is what I usually do. But you could also take a pencil and then what you could do is actually score it with your pencil and get that exact line as well. And that that's gonna do is enable you to cut it and cut it well so that you know it's going to be pretty much on the line. So there's my line. There's the part of the transfer I won't be using. I will save it because you might be able to use it on another part of your project. So I'm just going to cut it down on my line. And I'm gonna move it out of the way because I don't want it to shift. Remember we talked about transfers being fragile when they're off the paper. I want it to stay there. And even though this is a sticky back, it's not gonna stick on there without assistance. So I wanna gently move this over out of the way so that when I come in here and use my transfer, I can keep that piece safe over here. So now I have this piece of transfer, which is gonna fit perfectly. Look how beautiful that color is with the Weeping Willow. I mean, that is some stunning, stunning transfer. I've got you nice and close so you can see. These transfers can be bent around edges. You can bend them around corners. You can layer them, cut them and layer them. You can cut out pieces. Say you only wanted a small piece of this, like maybe a tiny flourish. You could cut that out and use that. I save every single little part of a transfer um, so that in case I need it for another piece, I have it. So let's look at how we're gonna lay this out. I think I'm gonna cut along this line just so I have a little bit more space. All right. So now when I put my piece here, I can really see how it's going to sit. If you need to, you can get out your little brackets because I have the little piece that's gonna go here. I can imagine how it's gonna look with the actual piece on there. And I'm gonna show you how I apply this. So I have my burnishing tool. I have my door open. I didn't take it off. I painted around the hinges. And I'm going to remove the protective backing of my transfer, all right? Now remember, if I take this backing off, this is now a fragile creature. I don't want to lay this down. I don't want to drop this. I don't want my fan on. I don't want the wind to blow it. I need to stay nice and still so that when I put it down and push it onto my piece, that is where it's going to stay, all right? Does it need to be exactly perfect and centered? No, but can you line it up pretty good freehand? Sure can. So I'm just gonna go, okay, well that's good. Make sure it's lined up at the top. Make sure it's lined up at the base and press it. So what's gonna happen is this should Oh gosh, it moved. This should stick fairly well. I'm just gonna give it a little rub. You could probably let it go. See, I can let it go and it's staying. But if you were nervous, you could always put tape to hold it gently for you before you begin to burnish your transfer down. So when I say burnish, this is what I mean. You have your stick and you have your transfer. I'm gonna put my finger up under the corner. I usually like to start at the top and work my way down. This is a fairly large piece of transfer. Like this transfer is not small, right? It's got a lot of little intricate patterns and I'm not rubbing hard. I'm just gonna rub very gently to release the image off of the sheet and onto your clean painted surface. Now I'm gonna tell you, transfers do not like wax, but you can apply a transfer over top of a clear coat. So if you felt the need that you wanted to clear coat your project and then add a transfer, you're okay, you can do that. But if you finished your project and you waxed your project, your transfer will not stick, all right? You need to be prepared to know that transfers need to go down onto a clean, freshly painted surface that has not been waxed. You can apply your transfers to mirrors. You can apply your transfers to glass. You can apply your transfers to naked wood. You're not locked into only putting it on a painted surface. You just do need to know that your surface must be free of wax. So this is a little difficult for me because I'm trying to keep my camera in focus and upright and showing you exactly how this transfer goes down. If you weren't here on my film, I would just be you know, sitting right in front of it and releasing it or laying it down flat if that helped you. Like if you're working on like a big drawer and you, you didn't wanna work on that vertical surface, you can very easily lay your drawer down and work so that your transfer and gravity <laughs> is not gonna fight you. But I just like to burnish my edges and make sure that it's all going to stick. So by burnishing these edges down, I'm just kind of keeping my finger around the paper 
making sure that I can get it all down onto this piece. All right, so I've got my little stick and I've got my paper. I've also seen where Amy actually um, cuts off her, her backing sheet as she works. Like she lays it up here and then she kind of like works in sections. I just kind of like to lay the whole thing down and get it this way. So I'm just gently rubbing, making sure really that those edges are secure. Those are the most important things. But the more ornate your transfer is, obviously the kind of slower you're gonna have to go. You know those big red roses that I have on the roses are red transfer? Um, you're able to really just kind of slap those on quick. This one has a lot of little teeny tiny details. It's almost like there's like little lace pieces of netting. It's so, it's so pretty. Who here has used this transfer? Has anybody tried this one yet? It, it is the Gilded Age, right? Is that what it's called? I have to look at it again. I forget the name. The Gilded Age transfer. You can find it under Bells and Whistles on the Dixie Bell paint page. And this was from the last release of transfers. They've had many designs come and go throughout the years. But this one is stunning and brand new for me. I haven't used it yet. So I'm just going to turn my door. I'd love to keep that door out of the way. Is it in your way when you're trying to... Oh, I guess I am going to have to keep it turned so that you can see. Because this door keeps wanting to close in front of me. So you just rub it and release. And you can see on this paper how it's, it's come off of the paper and onto my project very easily. I think one of the first time I used transfers, I felt like I overworked it. Like I was rubbing really hard and you don't have to rub hard. You really don't. You're just gently making sure that every single tiny section has adhered to your piece. So you could stop if you wanted to and like work the bottom up. I always like to kind of go top down. It's just the way that I roll for the transfers. And if your transfer sheet was on here and you had a hard time like sticking your fingers under the plastic, you could always take another piece of the plastic and get your little finger under there to kind of grab a corner. All right, enough talking, get to work, Melissa. I'd like to get at least a couple pieces down on this today to show you how this is gonna look. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it today but I was saving it for y'all so that you can see exactly what it looked like. Some people like to use, say, a credit card instead of the burnishing tool. But these tools work just fine for me. Really start to see that detail pop. You often see me do these on TikTok in fast motion, but you're getting the real motion today. I'm going to start to put my finger down on this side and work from this edge over. So when you seal your transfers, you have a couple of different options. You can use clear coat or you can use wax. You remember that I told you that I don't like to use wax before my transfer because your transfer will not stick onto wax, but your transfer can be sealed with wax. You can do that with wax. You can do that with clear coat. I like to usually use a clear coat applied with a blue sponge just so that I'm definitely protecting my surface. And then I usually use my waxes over top. I like to use a lot of dark waxes and gilding waxes when I work on my projects. So I usually just clear the entire thing with that clear coat. And then what I'll do is I'll come back in and add my waxes over top. It is recommended to seal them versus not seal them just to make sure that they stay down, especially if you have a surface that's maybe going to get touched a lot or heavy use. And when I get down to the bottom down here, I'm gonna show you a little trick. You can take the extra piece of transfer sheet that you had, put it down and burnish over top of it because you don't really wanna scratch your fresh paint, right? Like I just laid this paint down. And if I came in with my little stick and really tried to rub that really tight corner, what's gonna happen is you're gonna scratch your paint and you don't wanna scratch your paint yet, right? This is fresh. I just painted this yesterday. So I wanna make sure that my transfer is burnished down 
without causing any damages to my paint. So by taking the excess sheet, you can easily use that as like a buffer to make sure that it stays nice and fresh and not scratched. Because like I said, I haven't sealed this yet. I won't seal it until the entire transfer is down and then I will seal it. See if I can get my finger this way start to make sure that it's sealed all the way over there so if you find that while you're working a little piece of the transfer didn't stick like you missed burnishing it down you can easily just relay that flat and then continue to burnish that section it'll go back down easy peasy but be sure be careful when you get to the corners like this that you don't slip because this paper could slip and then what will happen is this is a massive design right this is like a very big intricate design and if you were to slip while well, you're getting close to the edge here while well, all of your transfers not adhere to your piece you might be worried that your transfer would would move off the slippy slidey backing paper so I just go real slow when I get to the bottom here when I get to the very last little bit making sure that I've got all of that transfer grabbed exactly where it's supposed to be and after I know that it's completely down and everything is there you can take off your paper so this is what you're left with this is just a sheet of paper and FYI these are great to keep as well I keep these on hand to go under the edge of mirrors when I'm painting because this is like a non-stick surface so these are really great for when slide in around a, a drawer that maybe you can't remove or the edge of a mirror so let me see if I can pick up this heavy mirror or heavy mirror heavy piece and show you up close look how pretty that is oh my gosh you guys that design is stunning now you can imagine the glass closed here and then that that little hook will be back up here <gasps> so pretty this combination this color combination is gorgeous gorgeous let's turn it around let's work on the front a little bit and aim you back a little bit how we doing that is gorgeous isn't it pretty patty that is like that's some serious detail like can you see how that all the little part that's all netting that looks like netting it's all those little tiny bits that were pushed down onto the paper this is a really this color theme right here is very me I, I really like this muted color like I would put this in my home on the front of a dresser drawer stunning stunning all right so let me grab let's see if I can find in my little stash of hardware up here so these will be going back here my thought was use part of these jewels right look at these gorgeous jewels some of these jewels might be a good size to go under where this might sit. What do you think? How wide is that piece? It's not terribly wide. I could do one flower at the top and one flower at the bottom. That would work. That would be cute. These almost look like earrings. Isn't that stunning? That looks like literal, like an earring drop. Is there two of them? No, there's only one. There's only one, one, one. I could also do a flower at the top and like a jewel at the bottom. The options are endless. So the hardware didn't come off. I would have loved it if they would have come off because I probably would have lined like the whole thing across. Let's see How about up here. Let's see what we can do up here on the edge. Turn it around. It's heavy. This is not small, this box. It is a heavy, it's a heavy box. Let's see about this part. Is that bigger than the piece or is that gonna fit? might fit we've got four of them let's cut one up and see what happens all right so i've got my scissors i'm going to just take my scissors and i'm going to cut one of these images but then maybe i'll lose the corner and i don't want to lose the corner it's too wide for that what do i do what should i do let's see hey shauna thanks for watching and joining me today well let's do with the piece that i know i want to do which is the top piece right so this is the, the lid for the jewelry box. There's a mirror on the inside. There's a lid on the top. I've taken it off. I wanna do something right on here. Let's move my tools out of the way. 
and see what we can fit on the top of this piece. I'm going to bring you in and angle you down so that you all can see exactly what I am working on here. All right, so these scrolls are not it because they are too big, but one of these is going to fit and I think it's going to have to be this piece because this piece is the like the even piece. If you look at the other one, oh, that one's even too. I'm going to cut around all of these little scrolls and we're going to see how I can get it to fit on the piece. If you're tuning in late, just so you know, this is the Gilded Age transfer. You can find this under Bells and Whistles. That's the back, right? The front of it is curved. If that sits right there on the edge, where does this go? This comes right down the top. So do I want this little flourish to overlap this edge? If not, I could just gently go in and cut it off because I could also do the same thing up here so it sits up a little higher. Hmm, decisions, decisions. It has to go this way though, because the roses are pointing upwards. I feel like that would be backwards if I didn't. I don't mind it coming over the edge. Do you mind it coming over the tiny little edge of the, the piece? I think that it's okay, right? Even if it's gently covering, let's do it. I'm gonna move my scissors over, move my transfer over. It'd be helpful if I was standing up because I don't wanna get this crooked, but I also want to be able to show you everything. So remember, this piece of transfer has the backing right? Once you remove it, this is a fragile creature. You have to hold it gently and lay it down where it's going to live. You can't really slide it around. Okay. So I'm going to peel that off and it's just going to drop that piece in the floor. My roses are going to go upwards. I really feel like I need to stand up y'all. I want to be like right on top of the lid so that I can make sure it's not going to be crooked because that'd be so sad if it went on crooked because once you kind of lay it down, it's down, right? Like you can't, you can't mess around. It has to be even to the left and the right as well. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now I can sit back down. <laughs> I just had to balance like precariously over top of the camera to make sure that it was on there. Okay, so now it's here. I'm gonna give it a gentle rub. See how this could technically be cut off, but I feel like that would be weird if you cut off that edge, right? You wanna make sure that you can still see that little flourish. I don't mind that little flourish. I'm gonna work on the flourish first because this is a bended surface, right? This is curved and I want the curve to be perfect. So I'm gonna gently scrape with my tool, but then I'm gonna use my fingers. I often use my fingernails when it comes to like edges, just to make sure that I'm getting all of the little teeny tiny parts, because this isn't as easy as my finger to get in and around the edge. So now it's around the corner very easily. So Jill, let's see. Oh, Jan says she taught her 10 year granddaughter to apply transfers. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. How did she do? My daughter really likes putting them on things too. Um, I think she's done, what has she done? My daughter has done her phone case. She's done her iPad case. She's done her computer case. She's done a lot of stuff with transfers. She's had a lot of fun with them. They're, they are simple to use. You do need to know that like ones like this that have such an intricate pattern you might have to burnish a little bit longer. It might take you a few more minutes just to make sure that you're getting all of the edges down onto your piece, but they're not hard to do at all. You know what one is great for beginners? Cacti and succulent. Do you remember that one, cacti and succulent? The, the images are smaller and they are like the perfect round size to go on something small. So they're very easy to get onto a piece. We, we use that one a lot when my daughter plays with transfers. She likes that cacti and succulent one. So as I'm rubbing, I'm just gently pulling to make sure that it's released. You can see the color change. Can you see the color change from the image that's not come off yet versus the image that has been burnished down onto the piece? See how it kind of is a little bit lighter? You're able to really see that happen. And it's your choice. You wanna work from the top and rub. You wanna work from the sides and rub. You're not locked in. Actually, my arms usually get tired, so I, I change on purpose because I like to work at it from different angles. A lot of times when you guys are watching me, it's, it's a really strange angle for me to actually do something because I'm trying to show the camera versus showing myself what's happening. So over here, I'm gonna grab the edge and I'm just gonna gently burnish, trying hard not to rub my freshly painted surface. I don't wanna get that stick rubbing 
on my fresh paint because that will remove the fresh paint. The other thing is too, when you're applying a transfer, sometimes you might find a corner that you're like, oh, this corner just won't come off the paper for some weird reason. Maybe it got hot when transport or like, you know, it was really super old. Sometimes your transfers are really old. They don't stick as good. Coming at it from another angle, so like stopping this side and going back to the other side is often helpful as well. Kind of hit it from another angle and then you're able to really get it down. What do we think of this color combination of this beautiful Gilded Age transfer and Weeping Willow? It's really good, right? I'm kind of excited to see how this is gonna look with all of the pink, because this piece has a lot of pink on it. The piece that I did on the inside of the box had a lot more gray. I like pink and green together. I, I like that kind of vibe. It's a little bit more flashy, pink and green. So I'm just rubbing my transfer down, gently burnishing as I go along. You guys are getting the close up view of all of this today, but this is also good for you to see it in real time. Sometimes I shoot things on fast motion and then I get a lot of comments saying, you know, how long did that really take? Like how hard was that really to do? So by showing you exactly how this stuff works, it's helpful. It's a helpful teaching tool. Maybe I'll save this video to my YouTube channel with the finished product when I'm all done. So as you're pulling, you can feel it kind of go. The center is going to be a little bit easier. It's a little bit more solid than the edges. It's very opulent, this transfer. It, it, definitely, it definitely screams Gilded Age to me. I'm a big fan of the Gilded Age, um, like the 20s. That's the Gilded Age. If you think of um, 1920s flapper style, there's a lot of really great jewels, jewel tones, a lot of gold, a lot of extravagance, kind of Baroque style. Gilded Age, what's that movie that was out? Leonardo DiCaprio was in it. My daughter and I watched it together. It was so good. I just was swooning over their outfits and the, the, all the furniture in all of the rooms. It was amazing. Look at that, what do you think? Oh my gosh, look at that color combo. That is so pretty. So I, I often rub it with my finger afterwards just to make sure that it's all like smoothed out. I don't even mind that little tiny peak that comes down over the edge. Isn't that nice? Oh my goodness, what a beautiful color combo. So when you open the lid, obviously I still have to finish the inside. I haven't even cleaned it or done anything. There's one spot here I need to sand and touch. Um, I might even take some of those flourishes and put them on the glass. That might be real pretty to put on the glass as well. But that is such a beautiful combo. Weeping Willow, Gilded Age Transfer, those flowers. I kind of wish I had a whole transfer of just those beautiful flowers. Wouldn't that be stunning? Oh my goodness, so pretty. All right, let's see. I don't want to tangle myself up in the, micro, in the little microphone here. Let's aim you back up so that we can continue to work. On a project. I'm here. I'm here. So now this is done. This is on the lid. I knew that was going to go there. Now I just have to do this pattern on the opposite side and then I have to figure out what I'm going to do with all of the little pieces on the front. How I'm going to design this beautiful Gilded Age transfer around here because I, I honestly I feel like this part might be too thick but I really want to put it on there. I wonder if I can fit a scroll. Let's cut one of these scrolls up and see how much room we have. A lot of this is just kind of playing with your design and seeing what it is that you want to do. I mean, you could layer it over top and then cut it, or I could just cut out the flourishes and then one flourish could come in here, one flourish could come there. Like I could do opposites all the way up the piece. What do we think about that? Hmm. I'm stuck. It has to speak to me. It has to talk to me in order for it to work. But I do really want to put something of this. I really wish this hardware would come off. Wouldn't that be stunning if I could just put that straight across the drawer? And I can't because this hardware is locked in 
by the velvet on the inside. And I don't want to start taking the velvet out because you know what happens when you start taking out the inside of these boxes. It's not fun to put back in. It never goes back on the same way that you took it off. You know what I could do? How many ends do we have? That's a straight end. That's a straight end. Hmm, I was thinking I could like just do a section of it. I mean, I could cut straight up parts and just do the top of the drawers. I'm stuck. What do you think? If you were me, would you take, let's move you back so you can see the entire piece. Would you take this part of the transfer and put it around here? Remember, there's an embellishment up here. I don't want to hide that gorgeousness, but I could put a part of this around the sides. I'm, I'm really stuck. I have like a million ideas floating around in my head and now I don't know what I want to do. Because I still have this sheet as well. Look at that big beautiful beast. Oh my goodness. That's so pretty. I need to, you know what, I need to get another one of these and use this as like the top of a table. Wouldn't that be stunning on the top of a table? With that gorgeous pink. Let's cut out all these flourishes so I see what I have. One, two, three. Four. There's four tiny flourishes and two large flourishes. I put one large flourish on the top of the drawer. Ooh, I can, I might could line it up like this pattern, like it goes around the hardware. And then I just have to cut it for the drawers. Is there too much space in between the drawers to have that look pretty? What are your thoughts on that? So I think for now, that might be as far as I can go because I really can't take it any further until I decide exactly my layout with this original hardware and the jewels. Too bad this isn't wider. Wouldn't that be stunning with that coming straight down too? With that over top of that? It'd be lovely. Let's cut out some jewels and put the jewels on there. We know where those are going to go. What jewels do I have two of? It's going to have to be these little flowers at the top. I have two of those. There's a lot jam packed onto these image sheets, you guys. A lot. Just be careful when you're cutting in around your edges. that you're not going to move your images off your paper before you need them. So there's like these tiny, you can't really see them, but there is tiny little holes here. And these holes would be where this goes on. Let's put those right there. So I'm gonna do one on there and one on there. That's one, two, three, four. Should I do one at the top and one at the bottom? Like this. That would be cute. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's bring you back in nice close. We'll do these ones and then I'll let you, I'll let you go. Mama's gotta go to volleyball anyways and pick up volleyball kids. So there's tiny, tiny, you might not be able to see, but there's tiny, tiny screw marks here. One here and one here where this hardware is actually going to go back on, right? So I would screw this back onto exactly those holes. So let's put one on each. So the, the little purple dot is gonna go exactly where the hardware is gonna go. And I'm actually just gonna use my fingernail to get this off. I'm not even gonna use my burnishing tool. I'm just gonna rub it with my finger and it's going to release off of there. And I'm just gonna be able to get the edge. This way I'm holding it tight on the drawer or door, I should say, and getting it off. So there's one. So now that would be there. Cute. Let's do the next one down below. They're all the same size, right? Yeah, they're all the same size. So again, the little the little purple jewel is gonna go directly where the little tiny screw hole is for the hardware. And again, just gonna use my fingernails to burnish down. I mean, you can use the tool like this, but it's almost harder to like use the tool then use your fingernail. I feel like I can definitely make sure I can get all the edges when I use my own hands. So now, when this goes back on, that will sit right there. Q. 
cute, cute, cute. Can you see that pattern shining in there too? Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute. Let's do this side too. Back you up a tiny bit. Same process on the other side. Peel off the backing. Make sure that your tiny little jewel is going to line up. Use your fingernail or use the enclosed burnishing tool to make sure that this transfer releases. Perfect, one more. So if you're tuning in late, this video is all about the Gilded Age transfer. The Gilded Age transfer is a four sheet transfer from the Bells and Whistles line at Dixie Bell. It's very, very pretty, very opulent. And I'm just burnishing it down with my finger. This is where the hardware is going to be. And we are going to fancy pants this little jewelry box up. There we go. So now when I put this back on, they'll give it a little bit more oomph right there. We've got the gorgeous piece on the top shining and looking stunning that will sit up here and then I'm going to repeat this pattern over here on the other side I did that beautiful transfer down the side so when you open this up the glass is there oh I wonder if I have enough flourish to do one down here at the bottom like when you open up the door you would see is this too big you would see a really pretty little flourish maybe too large oh I might be able to just fit it so then it's like hidden and then when you open it up it's underneath that would be cute too that would be really cute so that my friends is all i can do for now i need to cut out the other part of the transfer apply the same way so i'm going to mimic the exact same piece on this side on the other side so when the glass is closed you will see that shining beautiful transfer on the top of the door we have this gorgeous purple kind of purplish pink i'm in love with that flower on the front of here is it weird that I get obsessed with like one little part that I just want to do the whole thing? I want like, are you listening Dixie Bell? I want one of these huge flowers. Wouldn't that be stunning? <laughs> it would be so pretty. So this is not a small box. Look at it compared to me. It's tall, it's big, it's heavy, and it's also perfect for Christmas. I love a good jewelry box flip around Christmas because people will buy this for gifts. It will uh, be easy to sell. I think so anyways. I always have good luck with my jewelry boxes and I love to paint a jewelry box. This one was from the Goodwill. I think it was under $10, which is a which is a steal, which is a bargain for a box of this size. And I have two. You can see another one over there. This one's a little bit different. That one's a little bit more modern style, but equally pretty. This one I got for five bucks. Can you imagine? Five bucks. So cute. So cute. So stay tuned, friends. I will finish this box hopefully in the next couple of days, and I will throw it up onto my social media channels. My name is Melissa. I'm the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA. I'm always available to answer any questions that you might have um, when you're working on a project. Feel free to shoot me a message. You can find me across all of the channels at the Top Drawer RVA, and I am live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to play with paint, usually sitting on the floor, but I get to sit on my stool today and work on this jewelry box. I love it. I think I'm gonna get out the gilding wax. We're gonna gild all the edges in gold. And I'm gonna make this piece look stunning. But this is Weeping Willow, this is the Gilding Age, Gilded Age, and you too can try this at home. This is a beautiful transfer, give it a try. Take care everybody, I hope you have a fabulous week, and I will be back next week. And I better start some Christmas painting next week. You guys wanna paint like Santa or something next week, or is that too early? <laughs> Should I wait until, wait until at least Halloween is done? I don't know, we'll see. I'll see you next week with a new project. I'll be back, bye.